start our warm up because it always takes a little bit longer when I record. We do extra sets. Here's your beep hamstring curls. I feel some soreness in my legs today. <sighs> Tuesday. <laughs> That's good. I like that. Don't always notice it until I start to do these moves and then it feels a little tight. It's like, there they are. Exactly. There's your beep. Change that to crisscross. Nice and tall. Elbow to knee. Five, four, three, two, hinge and swing. Here's your beep, hinge down, rest the hips forward. Arms are weightless on the way up. Remember not to dip too low, it can get, make you feel dizzy. Keep your butt behind you on that hinge. Bending the knees a little bit, and then we'll do front kicks on the beep. There it is, nice and tall, front kicks. Reach for the opposite toe with your hand. The leg that you're standing on, try to keep it pretty straight. When you have tight hamstrings, you end up dipping and bending that knee and then you have to round your back. Might not be able to kick quite as high, but trying not to do that. Alternating hip circles will be next. There's your beat. Alternate hips, up and out. One always feels good. Ooh, I'm losing my balance. <laughs> I did a workout yesterday and I got done and one glute felt like it was going to cramp. So I was limping, I was lopsided. Here's your beat, <laughs> jog in place. I was like, why is that one leg all fired up and not the other? <laughs> it didn't even specifically work glutes. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, I can still feel it today. So it was a little crampy. Boxer shuffle, jogging in place, light on your feet. And then side skips are next in three, two, one, side skip. I usually do three and a tap and back using the arms to get some height. Side steps are a good substitute. If the skips don't feel right for you. Three, two, and one. Jumping jacks, modified are good, regular are good, or a mix of both. Almost done. There's your deep rest changing timer. Okay, squat, side bend, 30 seconds. Here we go. Lower down into a squat, up. Nice big long reach there. Get some length through the core. It's not just arm going overhead. I want you to feel that down through the rib cage all the way down to your hip. Get a little lower in the squats once you've loosened up. <sighs> I'm out of breath already. <laughs> Four, three, two, and one. Step back, lunge, arms overhead, gently pushing the heel toward the floor, open through the front. Ten seconds left on this one. There's your beep. Finishing off as always three times. Big reach for the ceiling. Look up. Swan dive down. Forward bend. Hold here for two. One. Bend your knees. Roll yourself up. 
big reach up towards the sky. Swan dive down, hold here for two, one, bend your knees, roll yourself up one more time, big stretch up, swan dive down, stay here, rest in the stretch, try to straighten the knees a little more, you can do one at a time, inhale, fill up your torso, feel some expansion through the ribs when you inhale, and then exhale, go a little bit deeper, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and one, bend your knees, hug the abs in, roll yourself up carefully. The exercises today, we do the heels elevated squat. That's optional. You can do a regular squat instead. And then we do a single leg deadlift with a bicep curl. So you've got one weight. This is where we do a single leg and then one curl at the top. And then the last, so that's a heavy dumbbell, heavy-ish like on the heavy side of your medium, if you've got options. And the last one is lifting your knee, shoulders, and we fold in and we alternate. So we'll get some balance and some shoulders. This is an airing on the light side, like between light and medium. All right, so if you're gonna do heels elevated, set up two dumbbells so that you can put your heels on the handles. You'll hold your heavy dumbbell at your chest. And then step onto that heels on the dumbbell balls of your feet, your high heels are on the floor, and then chest up, sticking your uh, hips behind you, and those knees get nice and low. Here we go. Lower down for down, down, two counts, and then up, up, two counts. It can be a continuous movement just taking two counts to get down, or you can do a slight pause in each position. I end up defaulting to that. It makes it easier for me to keep that rhythm down down, up, up, that was four, down, down, up, up, five, down, flex your glutes right here, press up, press up, six, down, down, up, up, seven, down, down, up, up, eight, two more, down, down, up, nine, one more, down, down, up, and up, rest. If you were on dumbbells, get those out of the way. Tripping hazard if we leave them out in the middle of the floor. One dumbbell, everyone put it in their right hand. Let me show you what this looks like. So one dumbbell in your right hand, palm is facing the front of your thigh. Most of your weight is in that same side leg. The other leg is a kickstand. It can turn out a little bit or be pointed mostly forward. And then you do a single leg hinge. Most of your weight, 90% is in that leg. Stand tall, one bicep curl. So there's a little twist on that. So your arm is here, twist to palm facing up or you at the top. All right, get your weight in your right foot, right hand holding the dumbbell. Keep your back nice and straight on the way down and up. Here we go, eight reps. Hinge down and then stand, pushing your hip forward and then do one bicep curl. Repeat, stick your butt behind you, back is flat, knee is slightly bent on the way down. Mostly hip, a little bit of knee, bring it to about six inches off the floor. That was three. Four, four more like that, then we do extra bicep curls. Five. I learned from last week, I had too heavy a weight for the bicep curls. So I went down today. Six. Seven, one more. That's eight. Now do five extra bicep curls in that position. Five, four, three, two, and one, same thing, other side, dumbbell in your left hand, most of your weight in your left foot, right foot is a kickstand, just for balance sake. I have it out a little bit to the side and I usually turn my knee out to the side a just a little bit. So that right knee might point out to the right a tad. Here we go, hinge it down, stick your butt behind you, flat back, exhale, stand, one curl, flat back down, 
flex that glute, push that hip forward. You're driving that heel into the floor on the way up, plus a curl. Here's three, stand, then curl. Here's four, and a curl, four more like that. Five. This is a really good one, six to do in front of a mirror, even a window, if you can see a reflection and check your back, make sure it's nice and straight. Here's seven. One more. Eight. Now five extra bicep curls there, still in that kickstand position, five, four, three, two, and one. And again, I say it all the time, that will depend on how heavy your dumbbell is. So last week I went heavier on the deadlift so that I could get more out of that, but then I could barely do the bicep curl. So it's a bit of a trade-off on that. But I don't like to overwork the back. And the thing is, is you should feel mostly glutes and thighs and then your back is secondary. So if you feel pulling through the lower back, um, we should talk. So we make sure that doesn't happen. Grab your light medium weights. I'm using fives for this. Palms face forward, this is what it looks like. One knee up, raise to horizontal T, fold it in, open it back up, everything goes down. And when I lift, my arms are a little bit in front, not flared way back, that's impingement on shoulders eventually, a little bit forward. Alternating sides, I don't care which leg you start with. Ready, set, here we go. Lift up, fold it in, open it back up, everything goes down, other leg up, fold, open and down, going for 10. Here's three, fold, open, down. Here's four, fold, open, down, five. I like to count them out sometimes because then I can control how fast we do it, six. Sometimes my clients are like, oh, you count so much slower than I would. <laughs> it ends up being a lot of momentum if you go fast, this is seven. A slight pause in each spot, eight. Two more, nine. One more, 10. Good, rest. And a word about that, if the balance is hard and that keeps you from doing the shoulder thing, I don't want there to be too much wobbling there. You could just do the shoulders, take out the single leg thing, and then you can work on balance on one leg separately. So that's an option. Getting set up for heels elevated, squat. Holding one dumbbell at your chest. If it's too easy, that dumbbell can be heavier. <laughs> All right, heels on the handles, ball of your foot, toes on the floor, high heels. Chest up, looking forward the whole time, ready, set. Here we go. Down, down, exhale, up, up. Squeeze your glutes on the way up, down, down, flex them here, up, up. Driving your heels into that dumbbell, keep that tempo. Here's three and up, down, down, chest up, up, up. Sit in the hips back, down, down, up. Up, halfway, down, down, up, up, six, down, down, trying to get those thighs parallel to the floor at the bottom if you can. Here's eight, down, up, up, two more, down, down, up, one more, down, down, up, stay here, stay here. We're gonna add the pulses. Lower to part way down, chest up, pulse for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, up and out and done. Jesus. <laughs> 10 pulses are hard. If you had to like end sooner on like six, it's like, there you go. Now you got a goal. <laughs> next time, next week you try for seven. Resting. Get those dumbbells out of the way. Grab your one heavy weight, adjust up or down if you need to for the single leg deadlift plus bicep curl. You did right 
side first. So now you're going to go left side for set two. Left hand holding the dumbbell, left leg is holding most of your weight, right foot is a kickstand. All right, I like to do it from the side so you can see my back. Ready, set, here we go. Hinge it down, back is flat. Exhale, push your hip forward to stand. One curl at the top, very controlled, it's not a swing. Hinge down, right back up. Looking for your back to be about parallel with the floor at the bottom. You bend the knee a little bit once you hit down there to keep your back nice and straight. If you tend to round your back, this is number four, I have to say that out loud to remind myself. You might, when you get a flat back, feel like you're just like overcompensating, but you might not be. It might just be that you don't really, aren't really used to <laughs> keeping that posture position. That six right there, curl at the top, two more. Take your tail behind you. Your neck goes with your spine. You've got one more. Head should not be hanging. That's eight. One curl. And now five curls if you can. Five. Four. I try to stop after each one so it's not a swing. Three. Two. One. Rest. Right side. Right hand holding the dumbbell, right leg standing, left leg kickstand, ready, stand tall. Here we go, hinge it down. Exhale, push your hip forward, drive that heel into the floor, one curl at the top. Here's two. Here's three. Four. Four more like that. Five. Six. Seven. The goal is not to touch the floor. It's to get nice and low, but six inches, eight. Now stay here and do five more curls or match what you did on the other arm. Five, four, three, Two, one, rest. Short breather, and then we go to shoulders, single leg balance. Grab your lightish weights, adjust if you need to based on what you did and set one, 10 reps. Grab those dumbbells, stand nice and tall. And by tall, I don't mean like overcompensating. Again, it's not chest out to get tall. It's string through the top of your head, lifting straight up. So you grow half inch taller just by straightening everything out. Palms forward, lifting one leg, arms up to a T. Here we go, raise it up, up, fold, open, down, other side, up, fold, open, and down. Three, fold, open, down, four, sweating, up, fold, open, down, five, keep that tempo, six, seven, nice and lifted and tall, eight, Two more, two more, nine. Last one, 10. Everything down, resting, going set three. In a few seconds, get a drink. Oh, I forgot to fill my water bottle. <laughs> Heels elevated, squat. Two dumbbells, end to end. Now mine are touching. This will depend on how big your dumbbells are too. If you need them to be a smidge wider just for comfort in the, in the hips when you squat, that's totally fine. I haven't said that yet, but my dumbbells fit pretty well for me to just have them touching. But if yours are smaller or something, you might need to go a bit wider, that's totally fine. The best position for squats is the one that feels okay and doesn't hurt and doesn't feel restricted when you lower down. 
One dumbbell at your chest, two counts down. Ready? Here we go. Down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down, up. That's three, down, down, up. That was four. Here's five. Keeping that tempo as much as you can. Here's six. A lot of extra work when you go slow, much harder. Here's seven. Here's eight. Two more. Down, down, up, up. Last one, down, down, up. Up, stay here, pulses. 10 for sure, more if you can, count your reps. So if you can get past 10, then you have a number to beat. When next time you do the workout, lower down part way, counting out my 10, here we go. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Do a couple more if you can. And then you press up out of it when you're done. Just for kicks, keeping track. Moving on. Back to single leg deadlift, bicep curl. All right, weak side first. <laughs> weak side first, if you know what that is, you may not know, then you just pick a side. How you know is if you just automatically went to your right side, that's your strong side, okay? Because that means you always start on your right side if no one tells you when to start. So switch sides for that. The dumbbell is in the standing leg side. Other leg is a kickstand, eight reps. Here we go. Hinge it down, back is flat, six inches off the floor. Exhale, stand, one curl at the top. Your back does not change shape on the way up or the way down. So you hinge at the hip slightly bend the knee, tail feels like it's sticking out behind you, neck is long, that was three. Drive through that heel, push the hip forward on the way up. Act like you're gonna push the floor away with your standing leg. Three more. Here's seven. One more, eight. Now stay here and do up to five extra curls. Five, four, still a kickstand. Three, two, and one, rest. So even when you're doing that bicep curl and you're mostly on one leg, that leg has to continue to stay a little bit fired up because it's the only thing supporting you, right? So it's just a way to get a little extra out of it. Other side. Switching, ready, here we go, last set, hinge down, exhale, stand nice tall, one curl. I do have to watch myself too, here's two, that I don't just like throw that bicep curl out there. Nothing should move except my arm, unless the weight is too heavy, in which case you do have to sometimes overcompensate a little bit, like I did last week. Here's four, nice tall, here's five, Push the floor away. Six. Seven. One more like that. Eight. Do that eighth curl. And now five extra. Five. Four. Three. Two and one rest. So the problem with strong side, weak side is, let's say you can only do three extra curls on your weak side, but you can do all five on your strong side. You're feeding that imbalance if you do. So you either match it and just like maintain on that side or you curl the other side, or you go back and do set four, <laughs> a couple extra reps on the weak side to kind of get the volume in there that you need to even those out as much as you can. Standing tall with your light weights, knee raise, lateral lift with the dumbbell folding in, ready, set. Here we go, nice and tall, up, fold, 
open and down, up, pausing in each position if you can. The only way you can't is if your weights are too heavy. You have to get through it a little faster. <laughs> this is three. Here's four, nice and tall. Turning for the camera, five. Arms flared a little bit forward. Six. Seven. Feeling my shoulders here. Eight. Nine. One more like that. So the interesting thing is, if I'm doing just the shoulder raise without balancing and just up, down, up, down, I can sometimes go all the way up to 10 pounds and I'm using fives right now, but you're holding for a long time. So it's time under tension, different kind of hard work. That's how I can make 10 reps hard instead of being able to be like, now I can do 20, you know? So then your workout just takes too long. That's all. Moving on, cardio, get a drink, <laughs> get mentally prepared. We have four jumping jacks, broad jump forward, march it back. That's interval one. Interval two is squat kick. Interval three is kettlebell swings using a dumbbell if you don't have a kettlebell. I'll use a dumbbell in the video too because most of the time people don't have kettlebells. Okay, getting timer set up. 40 seconds of exercise. 25 seconds of rest. First one is four jumping jacks, modified or regular, and then one jump forward or in place, soft landing, march it back if you jump forward. That's exercise one in 40 seconds. We start in three, oh, yeah. two, one, go. Four jumping jacks, light on your feet. One broad jump, try to get your heels underneath you for that landing and then march it back. That march back is a tiny break. <laughs> Get ready for the next set. Modified. And then a jump in place if you're doing that. Or even just a powerful squat. Doing everything for the video here. I can't see my timer, so I can't give you a time. Oh, I just looked. Three seconds. Two and one. Rest. Take your break right away. Squat kicks are next. Technically the easiest, but high reps. So big on the heart rate. You have 12 more seconds, but you'll squat down, come up and kick. Squat down, come up and kick. You can go fast or slow. Five, four, three, two, one. There's your beep. Squat, up kick. Squat, up kick. A little bit of a strong kick. And nice and high if you can. Waist tight, chest tight, kicking, thrusting through the bottom of the foot. Twelve seconds. Eight seconds. Four, three, two, and one. While you rest and get your kettlebell, not kettlebell, dumbbell, heavy-ish, I'll show you form. This is one where you have it by one end. Other end is on the floor in front of you. The first rep is a football hike. And from there, you thrust your hips forward, get set up, sink into that, bend your knees on rep one here. There's your beat. Let it swing back, exhale. As it comes forward, squeeze your butt. Thrust your hips forward. That dumbbell is a little bit weightless at the top. I can actually let go and catch it again. Just bringing it to forehead height is fine. Not overhead. And don't dip your head too low. It's all glutes and hips. Not mostly feeling your back. Squeeze your butt and push. Besides the hips and the glutes, back staying pretty straight. There's your beat. Nice and easy. Let it swing back to the floor. Woo. 
get that out of the way. Walk around, take deep breaths. Four jacks, one jump, march it back in three, two, one, go. I'm doing modified first. So even if you jump in place, if you just jump a little bit and get a little bit of power built into that, it's an excellent thing to build. Changing to level two. Soft landing. Sometimes when you get a really good jump, it feels kind of good. <laughs> feel like you get a little bit of distance, a little bit of air, five, four, three, two, and one, rest. Squat kicks are next. In 12 seconds, squat kick. Take a deep breath, going in, four, three, two, one, go, squat kick. Still good squat form, sitting back in the heels. A lot of bend in the knee, otherwise it turns into a hinge. If you don't bend your knees and you hinge at the hips and then your head goes down and up and you start to get more dizzy. Each squat is loading up that kick. So you start to kick as you come up out of the squat, eight seconds. Five, four, three, two, there's your beep. Rest, walk around, catch your breath, get ready for the dumbbell swing. Get that dumbbell nearby. You'll hold it by one bell. Get into position, sink into that squat. It's a little bit in front of you. Bend those knees, sit back into that. There's your deep, let it swing back and then pop the hips forward. Flex the glutes. You are also swinging it closer to your hips than you are to the floor. So that keeps you from bending super low too. It swings right between the legs, nice and high up. And then you thrust the hips from there, squeezing the glutes so that you feel the glutes working and not too much pressure in the lower back. Almost done. And rest. Walk around, catch your breath. I'm gonna change the intervals and shorten them up. For set three, so we're gonna get short on time. Shorter work, shorter rest. 30 seconds on, 20 seconds off. Four jumping jacks and a jump are next. Get ready, three, two, one, go. Get some lift, go a little bit faster if you can. You gotta squeeze some reps into that quick 30 seconds. Nice thing about a shorter interval is psychologically, you can usually push yourself a little harder because you know it's shorter. Five, four, three, two, and one. Rest. <laughs> I got out of my last jump. Walk, walk, stay up. Only sit down if you're dizzy or queasy. Eight seconds and then we squat kick. <laughs> Same, three, two, one, squat kick, go, go. You don't have to go super low in the squat, just load it part way and then come up and kick. We get plenty of squats in our workouts. So think about emphasizing that kick, putting a little power into it. 10 seconds. We'll have a quick change to the dumbbell swing too. So not a lot of time. Four, three, two, and one.
deep inhale, but we got to get ready for kettlebell swings, dumbbell swings. Hinge it down, get that in front of you a little bit. There's momentum to get it started with that pull. You're hiking a football. There's your beep. Hike it back, thrust it forward. Focusing on form, not hinging too far. Keeping the weight really close to your hips. Getting there, almost done. Last cardio burst. Ooh, there's your beep, nice and easy. Let it swing back down, rest. In the break, try to slow your breathing. You can inhale fast and then exhale a little bit slower. Try to calm that down. 